right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. This is in a pre-recorded video. <laughs> yeah, there's there's uh, some folks there visiting the Monterey Airport or heading away from it rather. Um, but uh, so the wildlife viewing station where we are is a place where you folks can go and have binoculars and telescopes to take a closer look at the beautiful Monterey Bay. Uh, the Monterey Bay is our largest exhibit. It's also the one that requires the least amount of personal maintenance from the aquarium, but the one that involves the most uh, community-wide work from all of you folks out there helping to protect our wild places and including out here in the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary, those federal protections that we have out here making this essentially like an underwater Yellowstone or Yosemite National Park. And in those areas uh, are protected wildlife and resources so that we can have these big charismatic megafauna, these large dolphins, whales, and sea otters, uh, those animals that we love to bring to you folks out there protected in our beautiful blue backyard and so um, people sometimes come to the aquarium wondering hey where do I see the dolphins and we usually direct them outside and just say they're generally out <laughs> in the big blue thing out there off the back deck and uh, happy to be able to show you these dolphins here today great way to spend a nice Friday afternoon here oh no no better thing on my mind to share with you folks out there than the majesty of the Monterey Bay and the back deck of the Monterey Bay Aquarium. So uh, that's one of the best parts about coming to the aquarium is that not only can you enjoy the exhibits and see what's under the water, you also get sometimes some dolphin and whale watching there from the back deck included with your visit. In fact, we have some folks here right next to us that are currently in the cafe enjoying some coffee, some tea, and watching those dolphins there as well. <laughs> Absolutely. We've also, uh, we have some harbor seals resting on rocks. We've got sea otters out here too. So mm -hmm. there's plenty of wildlife to check out this oh, afternoon. And especially cool. on this nice, nice calm, flat day in the bay, we can see for miles and miles to spot that wildlife. Yeah, and this is, it's really good to uh, be able to come down here right now because we do have a big storm that is incoming. We're going to have really big swell, lots of wind, maybe some rain as well. So to have sunny, flat, crisp conditions to be able to share. Uh, oh, oh we the got breach. the breach right yes. there live. We heard that they were jumping before, so they oh, must have finally gotten goodness. our message. To uh, We hope that wasn't <laughs> just a fluke. And for you folks who are coming in over here, Next to us here on the deck, if you want to take a look at our screens, you can see the dolphins there as well. Oh, that was cool to get that breach right there. If you folks want to take a look right here. So we're streaming right now live from this camera, but right here in this line have been the dolphins. Uh, so they're not up right now, but if you just wait, you should be able to see uh, those dolphins here in just a sec oh, here. I'm going to move over just slightly to the left there. Yeah, we should be able to see some more again. So again, these are some Rissos dolphins for you folks that are just tuning in live from the back deck of the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Rissos dolphins are squid hunters. You can tell them apart from other dolphins by the bright white back that they have. And they're also rather large dolphins that can be about 12 feet long. Uh, we often have bottlenose dolphins here off the back deck. We'll sometimes see Pacific white-sided dolphins, common dolphins in big pods a little bit further offshore. And uh, we have here some rissos that appear to be hunting in concert with some sea lions there as well. Emily's on the camera work doing her darndest. We are... <laughs> They're going in both directions, yeah, so it's hard to decide if I should go left or right there. I mean, I want to say that we're close to a mile away, maybe a little bit uh, less than that. Yeah. Um, or even a little bit more than that. So these, these animals are quite the long distance away. But... Very excited to be able to get that breach right there. For those of you on uh, on Twitch, clip that. I think I can say that now. Yes. Fantastic. A, we'll make that a highlight. Very cool. Oh, that's a whole lot of fun. Oh, beautiful. We've got the birds there in the background as well. You can see the people walking on the beach, probably unawares <laughs> of the dolphins there and the rippling of the heat there from the sunlight hitting the beach. Just another wonderful day here with our beautiful backyard of the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Oh, you can see them there heading over to the right. Excellent. Well, folks, we're going to keep streaming for just a little bit here. But if you are just joining us, welcome to the Monterey Bay Aquarium here live on Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, my name is Patrick, and I'm joined by... My name is Emily. <laughs> yeah, Emily. I'm on Cam the camera right now. Camera, woman, extra camera <laughs> woman extraordinaire there. Oh. 
Of course, I moved it just a little bit too far that time. Oh, it's all, right. all we'll good. Keep an eye for out. those of you folks who've been following us for a long time, I hope you appreciate that we finally have a long lens and a tripod as opposed to me fumbling <laughs> with uh, <laughs> the cell phone put up to the telescope here from the back deck. So, uh, oh, a little breach right there. A little tiny one. A little step step by step every day getting a little bit closer to professionalism here and these Rissos dolphins they they know what they're doing they're pros uh they are out there going and looking at for their squid meal here uh and oh oh sorry that was just a bird that was landing right there you can often tell where these animals may or may not be based oh there we go now we know it's noon it's noon there it is right there for you folks who may have just heard that there on the live stream uh we do have the hovden cannery um, whistle that blows here at noon. It's uh, recorded and uh, played here from the aquarium back deck. That whistle would have been the whistle that fishermen would have heard and would have known, okay, it's time to run down to the canneries. The fish are coming in. It's time to go to work. And every cannery had a slightly different whistle sound. And that's how you knew where to go to come on down. Oh, we've got some dolphins there on the lower part of the frame. Emily, we may need to pan know, down yeah, now. They keep. Down just they, this is a problem with wild. Oh, oh, little splash nice right there. That's splash. a problem with wild wildlife is that they just decide to go wherever they feel like, and uh, we just have to follow them around. And you can see they're kind of right there in the middle of the screen. And uh, there are quite a few different buoys up and down here. There are some uh, buoys that are used by some fishermen. There are others that are used by scientists uh, that we have. Off the back deck, other buoys mark where our intake pipes are. So in case you're wondering what those yellow buoys and the white buoy are right there, I'm not exactly sure specifically what those ones are for, but oh, it looks like we've got some uh, a surfboard there on the beach. <laughs> a little longboard there in the background. Not, not a great day to be out there trying to catch a wave. Not no, too many waves out no, there. No, it would be a pretty disappointing <laughs> day. I mean, if you're just featured in Big Little Lies. And that beach there that you can see in the background is one of the many beaches that was filmed in Big Little Lies there, uh, the hotel that um, some of the protagonists were a part of are, is over in that region of our Monterey Bay. So if you are interested in what you're looking at on that beach side, that's some of that beachfront property that was featured in Big Little Lies there. Let's see. Well, we're just checking the chat here, everybody, just to see if you folks have any super pressing questions for us that we've been ignoring apologies but thanks for tuning in everyone from around the world wherever you folks happen to be we are live again right now from the monterey bay national marine sanctuary and the monterey bay aquarium back deck it's fun to be able to say all of those things together <laughs> and we are looking at some rissos dolphins that are maybe a mile away from the aquarium diving in water that's maybe about 100 feet deep or so looking for some squid Oh, beautiful little dive right there. You see the dolphins there, sir? Right there. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Well, folks, if you have any questions for us, let us know. I do want to let you know that we are going to be live again this afternoon here uh, around uh, 3 o'clock. So uh, just kind of be ready. We'll, we'll be ready when we are. But uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the cool wildlife that's been washing up on the beach recently. If you've gone beachcombing, you may have seen some cool pyrosomes and sea butterflies. We'll be talking about that. Uh, Emily will be sharing... I'm very excited. About some birds. They're finally going to let me bird nerd oh, on, man. online live this afternoon. I've got my fellow bird nerd, Erin, who works here at the aquarium. She's going to spend a little time with us as our special guest for a little bird talk. Yeah. So this afternoon, uh, tune in and we will again have the camera live looking at the back deck. If we see those dolphins again, we will abandon all other plans and we will uh, talk <laughs> about uh, talk about those dolphins. Uh, they are bigger than Balnose dolphins, yes. yes and uh, yes. Jose, uh, it is not going to be the same Miami Dolphins logo. I imagine that that is a 
a uh, bottlenose dolphin, an Atlantic bottlenose dolphin. Those are maybe more, those are much more likely uh, to be the inspiration, and especially with that rostrum, with that nose of the dolphin, we know that it's not going to be a Rissos dolphin there. Uh, Emily, I do not remember where Risso came from for the Risso's dolphins. I believe it was named after the person who discovered yeah, them, but as, I f- I don't as know. most of those possess- yeah. possessive uh, animals but are. I, ju- I don't know any of the backstory to Risso, so we'll have to look that up. Thank you so much for that for that <laughs> question. But it is Risso's dolphin, so whoever Risso was, just like a Reese's found their pieces, Risso had a dolphin uh, right there. Let's see. Born and raised in Monterey, moved in 1993. Oh, well, we hope to see you again soon there, Linda. Oh, looking forward to the bird talk. We got a bird nerd getting ready for this afternoon. Awesome. Hey, thanks so much, everyone, for uh, tuning in once again. We are, oh, we got a sailboat going by. Sailboat's going to go by in front of the frame right now. There we go. It gives you a little bit of sense of scale, though, as far as like how big those dolphins are. They just pop up. Looks like the sailboat is going to strafe. (laughs) <laughs> and come into full view and do a little bit of dolphin watching yeah, itself. They there. just realized what was happening out there. <laughs> so uh, they're probably unaware that we are streaming them live to the world right now. But just so you folks know, uh, it is going to look like these folks are a lot closer to the animals than they really yes. are because of how far away we are. But this is a good reminder. You can see that the Monterey Bay, it's not uh, the Monterey Bay. We're very proud of the fact that it has people as a part of that ecosystem that are working in communion with it. You can see there uh, in the background, we've got people on the beach. We've got homes on the shore. We've got this boat here in front of us. Uh, People have been living here in the Monterey Bay for tens of thousands of years and have been uh, a part of that natural landscape for a long time. So, oh, there are the dolphins right there next to them. So if you folks out there uh, are interested in coming to see this wildlife, it's a really good idea to go out there on those whale watch boats um so that you folks can uh, go and take a look at these animals and those whale watch boats all work together to keep each other accountable and following those rules there of making sure not to disturb uh these marine mammals so uh when you're out there there's no real distance uh per se it's whether or not the animal's behavior is changed by you being there so uh if you see a sea otter it's probably you're probably close enough pull out those binoculars if you need to get closer uh but leaving plenty of space between wildlife and yourself not only keeps you safe and the wildlife safe it's also the right thing to do and allows us to have these amazing moments over and over and over again the sustainable life living with dolphins doing their thing in the monterey bay and us being able to just enjoy seeing them out there so just so you know that elbow went by looked good looked fantastic uh and uh that's what we like to see folks out there on the bay enjoying their wildlife very cool Okay. Patrick, I don't know if we want to yes. zoom out at all. I was going to show like off some of the harbor seals. Yeah, let me. Z- uh, yeah, here. for you folks out there, if you want to see a harbor seal up nice and close, uh, I'm going to. It'll be a little shaky here for a second while we move the camera. But there we go. So we're zoomed out. All right. So we should look good there. A whale There's watching a always makes you seasick too old to run. Sorry. Well, you can come over to the aquarium and do some whale watching from terra firma as needed there. Oh, Lydia, Cheryl, your son has a birding internship at CSUMB. He's just fin- up, finishing up his docent shift at the aquarium. Oh, that's fantastic. Awesome. Uh, ready to go there on YouTube. Uh, Rissos dolphins are not rare. No, uh, we do see them pretty frequently here, but uh, it's always a treat to see them because conditions for viewing uh, these animals are not always good uh, with wind, waves, uh, bad light. Um, it can be very tough to see these animals. So we just happen to have a really good day there being able to see those Rissos dolphins. So uh, now we are no longer looking at a Rissos dolphin. We are currently looking at uh, our favorite little blubber bud there on the rock yeah. there. So, uh, Emily, tell us a little bit about uh, who we've got here in frame. So, in frame right now, we've got a harbor seal doing its best to find a comfortable spot there on that rock. Uh, it is just, you know, slightly below high tide, so it's able to stay a little bit dry and warm out of this chilly water of the Monterey Bay right now. So this again is a harbor seal that we are looking at. And you can we're looking at it, it. We're looking at its back too yeah. as well, just in case you're having a hard time orienting. To the left is the head, to the right are the flippers there. 
and we've yep. also got some some birds for those bird nerds <laughs> like myself out there. Uh, so we've got some cormorants on the rock as well as a western gull sitting there. Now, we should mention that uh, there are multiple different types of gull here in the Monterey Bay as well. So multiple different types of gull and mm -hmm. multiple ty different types of cormorants. Yep. So these ones are going to be the pelagic cormorant. Yeah, so for right if now. you folks are out there and you think, us oh, it's just a boring old gull, there's a chance that it could be a very rare and exciting gull. So if you are taking photos of those uh, birds out there, it's a really good idea to head over to a website like iNaturalist to upload those photos. And particularly if you folks are out there walking along the beaches and you find gelatinous animals washed up, it's also a good idea to head over to jellywatch.org or to iNaturalist as well to let the folks know what you've seen because that uh, the, those observations that you folks do out there are crucial for scientists and other folks to know what's going on. Now here, Emily, you're looking at a harbor seal that is currently experiencing a little bit of a molt yes. there. So, so let me see here. I'm going to zoom in on that if that sounds good. Oh, yeah, I can, here, pan I up. can actually zoom in as oh, well. Oh, here, pan up and right a little bit, if you will. Up and to the right there. Oh, look at that. So you can see how this harbor seal looks rather shaggy in places and smooth in other places. Pardon. Oh, no worries. So that there is a harbor seal that is currently molting there, uh, losing that skin and regrowing the fur there underneath. Let's see. Oh, and uh, we have a question here. The Supreme Mech would like to know, what is the difference between a seal and a sea lion, Emily? There are a lot of differences, but just visually looking at them, if you are looking at their front flippers, seals are going to have much shorter front flippers. So our harbor seal that we are looking at right now has much, much shorter front flippers than, say, a sea lion would. So when you think of sea lions, uh, you know, oftentimes in media, uh, they're the ones that you're going to see stuck on land because they can rotate their back flippers up and underneath their bodies. Seals cannot. So in order to move when they are on land, they're just kind of flopping around. They're doing the worm up on the beach. They're kind of bouncing their way along uh, to get themselves from place to place. But when you look at their heads, there is a big difference. Mm -hmm. If you look very closely, sea lions are going to have external little ear flaps and seals will not they don't have those little external ear flaps yeah. and so they just have those holes on the side of their head and right, those ear oh those ear flaps are known as pinnae p-i-n-n-a-e ear pinnae ear flaps there uh we have a request emily yes. uh oh, oh who's a little harvester just woke up to look oh giving us the flipper <laughs> curling it back oh uh, we have a request to uh, look at those ochre stars there just yeah, below the water line if you don't down, mind zooming down there Real quick, uh, that is a seal on the rocks there. Uh, Thirteen nine, et cetera, et cetera. Rest of those numbers there. That is a seal on the rocks there. And uh, Emily is now zooming in a little bit there on those ochre stars. And actually, I think I can zoom in further. Yeah, there More we go here. The ultra zoom. So what we're looking at right there is a bed of mussels and it looks like barnacles as well. And those ochre stars are on top of those mussels. And what they can do is they can use extremely powerful suction on their tube feet and their arms to pry open the mussel shell just enough to be able to squeeze their stomach down into that muscle and digest the muscle from within. Uh, so you may not have thought of uh, a sea star as a horror film animal, but being able to crawl on top of their victim and liquefy them where they sleep. Imagine if uh, that was the poltergeist in your house that just got on top of you like a cover, like a blanket, and then just dissolved you from within and you woke we up and you we were gotta all gone there. we got to save this content for next Friday. It's Friday the 13th. Oh, right, that's Patrick. right. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, yeah. sorry. Okay, well, just Week early. forget, Week early forget what we just said. Fuel. Forget what we just said. We'll say it again uh, the next <laughs> time. There. Uh, what are the black birds? Jesse asks on Facebook. Those ones are going to be our pelagic cormorants. And they're actually a pretty cool bird that will nest on cliff ledges. Uh, here around the Monterey area, uh, we actually get pelagic cormorants that will nest underneath the deck of the aquarium. So mm -hmm. we have little cement ledges there that they have decided make the perfect sheltered little spot for them to build their 
algae nests out of and so they'll go out they'll collect that algae bring it back make a little nest and raise their chicks up mm -hmm. here underneath the aquarium we get to watch them fledge and it's uh, a hilarious experience because they are not the most graceful birds in the world so most <laughs> of the time it's really just falling versus flying Ex for them exactly right Okay, Emily, I'm wondering if we can maybe see about seeing those dolphins, those dolphins one last again, time, and then we're going to wrap it up. Dolphinately, we, sorry. Dolphinately, sorry. yes. Folks, we are running a little bit low on computer battery. Uh, we ran down from the office just to make sure that you folks might be able to take a closer look there. But this is a look from the back deck of the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Emily is doing an excellent job there navigating our camera. Trying to keep people from getting uh, some motion yeah, sickness We've got here. Mount Toro <laughs> there in the background for you folks out there who watched the live stream last week with Jim Covell. We had the snow there on top of Mount Toro. Uh, the snow has since melted, but it is looking good today. We have just have absolutely crisp gorgeous conditions here and now we're gonna zoom in there are the oh, dolphins there we go. still going still doing their thing here i'm gonna zoom in on that and we'll just need to pan up just, just ever so dolphins. slightly oh yeah right there a little bit yeah, there's the dolphin right there in the center of the frame. Oh, and over to the left as well. Well, thank you so much, folks, for joining us live from the Monterey Bay Aquarium and over in the Monterey. Uh, yes, there is a way to rewind back to where the dolphins came in there, Janet, right at the beginning of the broadcast. So we'll see those dolphins. So if you folks want to watch more dolphin time, head back to the beginning of the broadcast. Once we are done here, the replay should be live shortly. Uh, but we are live right now with those dolphins there from the back deck of the aquarium. Oh, I'm going to pan over quite a bit. Okay. I see a group of them just beyond the rocks here. Okay, that, uh, here we go, everybody. Oh, right. yeah. Hold on to your. Uh, Hold on here. I'm going to zoom back <laughs> yeah, out, maybe everybody. The, the X out of the. Yeah, I just want to super zoom. Real okay, quick we're there. out of the super zoom. We want to make sure that you folks out there are able to enjoy and not get too seasick as we pan over. Maybe look away from your screen. Oh my goodness! Look at that, covering so much ground. Oh, there's a. There we go. There look at we that. Go. Oh, oh gorgeous! Them. Hold on, hold on. Let me. Okay, I'm going to hit the super zoom. Okay. Ready? Keep it right there. Oh, nice, nice. Look at that. Just beyond that big group of cormorants there, we have our Rissos dolphins there going by. Oh, delightful. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in, for joining us here from the back deck of the Monterey Bay Aquarium with these amazing animals, these Rissos dolphins, a troop of sea lions there, birds hanging out on top of a log, <laughs> just so many amazing things here off the back deck of the Monterey Bay. Our mission at the aquarium is to inspire conservation of the ocean and what better inspiration than all of that amazing wildlife that we just got to see. Dolphins, sea lions, seals, cormorants, sea stars, mussels, all amazing stuff. We're going to sign off right now. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. And we will see you again soon here at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. And we'll see you this afternoon if you folks want to tune in sometime around 3 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And we'll see you soon, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.